If you want clean, clear water and very little maintenance, I highly recommend using a bog filter on your pond. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, please like my videos and subscribe. And check out my website, ozponds.com. Today I want to go over some of the basics of bog filters so that hopefully you can easily design and build one to suit your needs. Bog filters are brilliant because they work by utilising naturally occurring bacterias and microbes. This means that you don't need to be adding expensive additives or equipment to maintain clear, clean water. No UV lights, no copper ionisers, no barley straw, you can get rid of it all. Bog filters are cheap to build and they work way better in my opinion than any pond filter that you can buy. It doesn't matter if it's a small pond like this wine barrel or a pond so big you can swim in it like my dream pond. With a bog filter the water is always clean and clear. Essentially a bog filter is exactly what it sounds like. It's an area where the water moves through rock, gravel and plants nice and slow exactly like a bog or a wetland in nature. As the water moves through the bog, it's being cleaned by bacteria and organisms living on the rock and the gravel. Even the plants in the bog will consume nutrients, which are in constant supply, via the fish and any debris that breaks down within the pond. If you want to learn more about the science, you can research the nitrogen cycle in a pond or an aquarium, I don't want to bore you too much or make this video ridiculously long. Here's a rough diagram of a basic bog filter. <laughs> no picking on my drawing skills or lack thereof. The pump takes water from the pond into the base of the bog filter. I've found that bog filters work better if the water moves from the bottom to the top before spilling back into the pond. From the bottom of the filter, the water moves up through rock and pebbles or some other type of media. This is what provides surface area for those bacteria and microbes that are cleaning the water. Plants can then be planted directly into the rock and the pebble of the filter. Like I said, plants will help remove excess nutrients, but if the bog filter is designed well, the bacteria will be the most important component. So when it comes to plants, I like to stick mostly to marginals and I don't plant anything that has an invasive root system that will eventually clog the rock and the pebble. Once the water moves through the bog, the clean water then overflows back into the pond. There's lots of ways you can return the water back into the pond. I'll link a playlist of some of my filter builds in the description if you want to see some actual examples. But now that you've got a basic idea of the setup, let's talk size. If you just want to keep a few fish, you can size the bog at 10% of the pond size. So for example, if the pond is going to hold 5,000 litres of water, my bog will be 500 litres. But if you want lots of fish, or maybe you want a pond you could potentially swim in, we would expand the bog out to 30%. If the bog is undersized for the amount of fish or purpose, the water will go green. This is simply because there is not enough bacteria to process the nutrients being produced so single cell algae will grow. My personal opinion is that it never hurts to oversize your bog because over time the fish are going to grow and they're probably going to breed as well. Bigger fish or more fish equals more nutrients that the bog is going to need to process. Now let's talk about the ideal flow rate through the bog. Remember, bogs and wetlands in nature have a slow flow moving through them. So here's what I've found works best for me. I just take the size of the bog and times it by six. This will give me the amount of litres or gallons that I want to move through the filter. I calculate this based on the bog being empty with no rock and pebbles. <laughs> so in this poorly drawn sketch, if the bog is 500 litres, I'm going to use a 3,000 litre per hour pump. If the bog is 1,500 litres, 
I'll use a 9,000 litre per hour pump. I find it easier if you have a dedicated pump running the bog. If you do oversize the pump, you can direct the excess water flow over the surface of the bog, as I've done in this bog filter in a barrel. This can be really useful when you want more flow for streams and waterfalls, but that's a topic for another day. So now we've got the size worked out and we have the flow worked out, now we just need a decent design. A bog could be made out of any watertight container. This small barrel pond just uses a black storage tub. On this pond, the bog is in an olive barrel. If you're going to use plastics, I like to go for something that I know is food grade and UV stabilised. That way I know it's safe for the fish. This large bog is using EPDM rubber pond liner. Remember the bog works best if water is moving from the bottom to the top of the bog. This pretty much ensures that every bit of surface area within the bog has water moving past it. It's all the bacteria living on those rocks and pebbles that are doing the cleaning and keeping the water crystal clear. Depending on how big the bog is, it might need a false bottom to evenly disperse the water. I recently did a video on cheaper alternatives to aqua blocks if you're looking for something to create a false bottom in a large bog. I'll link that video down below. The next thing to consider when you're designing your bog filter is how you're going to clean it out. Bogs are very low maintenance, but usually once a year you're going to want to give it a good flush just to ensure that it's not all clogged up. On this pond's bog filter, I have a valve down the bottom that can be opened to flush out any accumulated waste. To help the solid material settle in the base of the filter, I either create the false bottom or use various grades of rocks. Sometimes I do both. This is a quick drawing of my bog in a barrel design, which is keeping the water clean and clear in this pond. It has larger melon sized rocks on the bottom that are gradually getting smaller and smaller as it gets closer to the top of the filter. I'll link another video um, of a quick build I did of this filter if you're interested. That video also has all the components that I used including the bulkheads and uni seals to create the watertight seals for the overflow and the clean out on the barrel. And I'm not sure if I mentioned in that video, but I do like to oversize the outflows. When the pump pumps the water into the filter, it's under pressure. As it leaves the filter, it's just being carried away by gravity. So more water fits in the pipe when it's under pressure. So for example, on this pond, the inflow was 32 mil and the outflow is 50 mil. Because this bog filter is made out of liner, I didn't want to put a hole in it for a clean out. So it has a barrel that goes right down into the deepest part of the filter. Here's a basic drawing of the setup. The left is looking down and the right's more of a cross section. It's pretty much a poor man's aquascape wetland filter. If you want to see how this one was constructed, I'll link the build video down in the description also. So there's lots of ways you can set up the clean out. These are just a few that have worked well for me. The last thing I want to talk about when designing a bog filter is preventing the filter from emptying if the pump stops, say during a power outage. Because the water is moving up from the bottom of the filter, if the pump shuts off, the water will siphon out of the filter and back into the pond. One of the ways to prevent this from happening is to add a breather pipe. I prefer to add a valve so I can regulate the flow, but some people prefer to just drill a small hole. When the pump shuts off, the water stops and air rushes into the pipe. This stops the siphon from occurring. That keeps the water in the bog, which keeps the bacteria alive, and also all that accumulated muck stored down in the bottom of the filter. If the bog were to fully empty, the bacteria would dry out and all that muck that has been captured would siphon back into the pond via the pump. There's lots of bog filter designs out there that you can try and feel free to experiment. 
I've just shared some that have worked well for me. So in conclusion, if you size the bog appropriately, have a good slow flow rate, don't clog up the system, and don't let the filter empty during power outages. You'll achieve crystal clear water every time. I hope this video has been helpful. If so, give it a like, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.